you know, there's a game theory has a history of being applied to understand and to give us hope about nuclear weapons, for example. The mutually assured destruction is a game theoretic concept that you can formulate. Some people say it's oversimplified, but nevertheless, here we are, and we somehow haven't blown ourselves up. Do you see a future where this kind of this kind of system can be used to help us make decisions, geopolitical decisions in the world? Well, like I said, the original motivation for the game of diplomacy was the failures of World War I, the diplomatic failures that led to war. Uh, and the real take-home message of diplomacy is that you know, if people approach diplomacy the right way, then war is ultimately unsuccessful. Um, the way that I see it, war is an inherently negative sum game, right? There's always a better outcome than war for all the parties involved. And my hope is that, you know, as AI progresses, then maybe this technology could be used to help people make better decisions um, across the board and, you know, hopefully avoid negative some outcomes like war. Yeah, I, would lo I mean, I just came back from Ukraine. I'm going back there uh, on deep personal levels. Think a lot about how peace can be achieved. And I'm a big believer in conversation, uh, leaders getting together and having conversations and trying to understand each other. Yeah, it's fascinating to think um, whether each one of those leaders can run a simulation ahead of time. Like if I'm an asshole, <laughs> what are the possible consequences? If I'm nice, what are the possible consequences? Um, my guess is that if the President of the United States got together with uh, Vladimir Zelensky and Vladimir Putin, that there would be significant benefits to um, the President of the United States not having an ego of kind of playing down of giving away a lot of chips for the uh, future success of a world. So giving a lot of power to the two presidents of the competing nations to achieve peace. Um, that's my guess, but it'd be nice to run a bunch of simulations. But then you have to have human data, right? You really, cause it's like the game of diplomacy is fundamentally different than geopolitics. You need data, you need like, I guess that's the question I have, like how transferable is this to, uh, like, I don't know, any kind of negotiation, right? Like to any kind of, lo some local, I don't know, a bunch of lawyers like arguing uh, like at, at a divorce, like divorce lawyers, like how, how transferable is this all kinds of human negotiation? Well, I feel like this isn't a question that's unique to diplomacy. I mean, I think you look at RL breakthroughs, reinforcement learning breakthroughs in previous games as well, like, you know, AI for StarCraft, AI for Atari. You haven't really seen it deployed in the real world, because you have these problems of it's really hard to collect a lot of data, um, and you don't have a, you don't have a well-defined action space, you don't have a well-defined reward function. These are all things that you really need for reinforcement learning and planning to be really successful today. Now, there are some domains where you do have that. Um, code generation is one example. Um, theorem proving mathematics, that's another example where you have a well-defined action space, you have a well-defined reward function. Um, and those are the kinds of domains where I can see RL in the short term being incredibly powerful. Um, but yeah, I, I think that those are the barriers to deploying this at scale in the real world, but and the hope is that in the long run, we'll be able to get there. Yeah, but see, diplomacy feels like closer to the real world than does StarCraft. Like, because it's natural language, right? Absolutely. You're you're operating in the space of intents and in the space of natural language. That feels very close to the real world. And it also feels like you could get data on that mm -hmm. from the internet. Yeah, and that's why I do think that diplomacy is taking a big step closer to the real world than anything that's came before in terms of game AI breakthroughs. The fact that, you know, we're, we're communicating in natural language, we've we're leveraging the fact that we have this like general data set uh, of uh, dialogue and, and communication from a breadth of the internet. Um, that is that is a big step in that direction. We're not 100% there, but um, but we're getting closer at least.